everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Jen and Christian's with me and happy October. This is what, another one of our 31 videos for our 31 days of Halloween and it marches on. And today we have taken a wrong turn, shall you say. So if you want to hear me and Sparky's thoughts, stick around. <laughs> Okay, so um, why is it that we're doing Wrong Turn oh, and not any of the other films, just the first one this today? Because I have, I know, I've heard you and quite a few other people, including the Trash Picture Show, say that the second one is actually their favorite. Yeah. And I feel that the first one, now it, I'm not saying this is a perfect film, guys, but this one has a really soft place in my heart. I really like this one and I can't, I can, I'm going to tell you guys why, but this one's special and I think it's very much overlooked. I'm not saying I don't enjoy two as well. Henry w Rollins is awesome, but I just think this one is always overlooked and I actually have some things to bring to the table that we should be celebrating this movie as well because this is this was uh, this was made in 2003, guys, and this was made at a time although there are movies that were at that same year that were kind of going into a little bit more sleazier direction. For the time, uh, the the movies were kind of very sanitary Whoa. and this kind of was going back to more dirty, gritty, grindhouse 70s. Uh, before I, I'm sorry, I just want to say one more thing. This is definitely a throwback to Hills Have Eyes and Texas Chainsaw oh, Massacre. Absolutely. Well, like, gee, I wonder what would have made your event that happened in the early 2000s would have changed America in particular, let alone the rest of the world's disposition from the more sunny, positive outlook that we had during the 90s to a more grim, darker outlook. Huh, I wonder what could have happened between the, like 2000 and 99 to now. I wonder what happened. Yeah, of course, horror the horror the horror movies people make uh, reflects the, the what was going on in the culture at the time very well. And yeah, America in particular was in a very dark place after 9-11. Uh, everyone was, you know, after seeing the horrors of that on their fucking television 24-7, a uh, guy in a fucking scream mask doesn't really scare anymore. And we aren't really as like lighthearted or jokey as we used to be. We came, became a little bit more cynical and a little bit more hardcore and looked back to uh, to stuff very reminiscent to the stuff of the of the stuff that was coming out during the Vietnam era in the late 80s during the Cold War. There were a lot of other films that were doing throwbacks to 70s horror in particular. The in April in April of the same year House of a Thousand Corpses came out. The following October Chainsaw remake came out and that January High Tension had its uh, inter had its international premiere. Never heard of it. Yeah, so like horror was in general going from a lot darker and way more grindhouse throwback style films than than what we had during the 90s and even the early 2000s. 2003 is really the point where like a little bit more heavy horrors was kind of starting to form and you can see that continued with a lot of the other foreign stuff like Wolf Creek and The Collector. Um, and Wrong Turn, granted, again, Hells of a Thousand Corpses did come out first, but Hells was a very big part of that big kind of 70s horror revival and it is very important for that. Now, that being said, I, people who remember when we talked about the remake from last year. I, I hate that remake. I said I didn't really like the original Wrong Torn or the franchise as a whole. That still stands true. I don't. I, I don't hate this movie. I've never hated this movie, mm -hmm. but it's just really not my bag. I this get that. This is not a movie that's really for me. I could, there's a lot I can appreciate about it. I definitely have stuff I could talk about that I really like about the movie. Just overall, you are definitely the, we, the way bigger fan of this franchise and this movie in particular uh, yeah. uh, than I am. Here. Yes, I am. I, I I love my cannibals. I love my grimy, exploitative, and like you said, this was kind of coming back to a time where I'm I'm not. It's fine to have the other kind of horror we were having up until this point, you know, the more not necessarily grimy, dirty, but that's where I get a lot of my kicks is the uh, is the sleazy kind of dirty grindhouse, and this really had the feel. And we just hadn't had a really good cannibal movie in a while, and I'm always yeah, for eating. Yeah, come to think of it, that was kind of a genre that died after, like, the mid-80s. That was definitely a genre that went into hibernation. And it was, and it's really good to see it back, and I, and, and it's, it's and, and the story 
fan, and I guess I can understand why some people, why even fans of this franchise, why this one isn't a particularly beloved, because the story, I can acknowledge, is very much by the numbers, um, not necessarily inspired, but like I said, I do have some things about this that I think people tend to overlook, and one of my biggest praises for this, uh, for, for this film is our main characters. One of the things that I think is so smart is because horror, horror has done this many times, not just in the 90s or in 2000s, this is just a trope of horror. A lot of times, there are, a lot of characters are there just for a body tap yeah. count, and you could argue with this one. I think the first two characters that buy it, the stoner characters that buy it, there's not much to them, but our other four characters that we follow along, I actually really like. They're likable. They're not obnoxious They, they have a bit more characterization than, than a lot of other uh, characters in slash movies are getting going to get. Hell, like, again, I don't really like most of them. I would stands one of them, um, but, like, I'll even give, give the movie credit. You are entirely right that these do get way more characterization than, like, any of the fuck it heads in House of a Thousand Corpses. Not to keep going back to that film, but, like, yeah, this movie definitely puts way more focus on its on its characters than that film does. But um, I don't really like or find any of them that memorable. Sans 1, which is our lead. Uh, so I, I like how we kind of do some, some of the stuff we do with our lead, who's a do who's a med student, or yes. at least actually a full-on doctor. Uh, he gets he gets fucking roped up into all this. And initially you think, okay, he's a kind of city douchebag uh, type that would be like the first one to die. Yeah. But surprisingly, he's actually not a piece of shit and does stick his neck out for all these other people that he kind of... He, he didn't doesn't really, even know. Yeah, he doesn't know any of them and he didn't even get any of them roped into it. They were stuck in this situation and he just happened upon them. He but just I do, walked in. I do like the subversion we, uh, of our expectations we do with him throughout the movie of him actually not being just the generic douchebag asshole you know, who would have died in the first uh, uh, first thing. Basically, the one ri which, rich asshole in the Friday remake. We, I, I, I <laughs> expect him to be like that type of character. Uh, yeah, but you he do. actually ends up being a surprisingly interesting character. He doesn't get a lot of characterization, but he work, it, it's a fun subversion of your expectations. He really does. There's a stoicness to him, but there's humanity behind him, and he and there's some scenes, like there's one scene, and again, he doesn't know these people from Adam, and one of the characters loses her, just, or they just gotten engaged and stuff, and he's holding her and comforting her, and it's just, I don't know, there's just something about that scene that I'm like, you don't see that in any kind of horror movie as in general, you don't even know this person, and it's just the humanity, he's not big on words, but there's actions there, and I really like that. Another standout character is, uh, is the character played by Jer uh, Jeremy Sisto, uh, the, you guys probably know him best from Six Feet Under, he played the brother in uh, Six Feet Under, and I really like his, he's a very laid back, right when you meet him, like everyone else is kind of pissed because, you know, he drives his car into, the, his Mustang into these other people and stuff, and he's like, dude, are you okay? And he's kind of also, he's also very, there's, uh, there's something really kind of laid back and nice about him, and another scene that I really like in this movie, again, it just shows the humanity that he doesn't know the doc from anyone, and he's hiding, and they're gonna make a play for the car, and uh, the doctor ran to make a diversion, and he gets hit in the leg, and again, this guy doesn't know him from anyone, and he, so he goes and makes a diversion to take it off of the guy that mm. got shot in the leg. I really, I don't know, there's just something about yeah, that I like that, I, I, and they don't know each other at all. I get that, yeah, he's totally the Your friends might not even do that for you. I get that, he's totally the type of character who, if this movie was made in the 70s, he would have been a total, like, hippie, just kind of grass and ass style hippie. Yeah! Um, you know, like, yeah, I, I can totally get that. And that is one thing, like, I will give this movie, again, I don't really care about most of the other characters, but I will, just, I will say, like, this movie does break tropes of even stuff that was coming out even after this film, where not, where all the survivors or all the characters are not unlikable douchebags. Ex like, they're not, they're, they're, that became a, a big thing, like, that was a thing back, even back into the 80s, but, like, that became a very big thing in a lot of the 2000s horror remakes, mm -hmm. in particular. Uh, and this the, this one actually doesn't. This one actually does make these characters likable, and you don't and you do. They're not like super. Oh no, that character! I'm gonna be heartbroken for weeks that they died. But you know, you're like, oh, that sucks. That, well, that, bummer for them. You know. That does suck. And I know I care about these characters because I thought it back then, and I caught myself thinking about it when we rewatched this film today. Was uh, when, like I said, this one couple they just got engaged, and he get what well, her fiance does die in it, and then eventually she does too. And I kind of catch myself 
myself every time I see that scene. At least she's going back to him now. Mm -hmm. And I like that. And I, that shows me what... I, another thing that really works about this movie, though, that I don't think gets talked about a lot, is this movie is really good with tension. There is a couple of scenes that I think really, like, I, I'm, I'm not, like, I'm, 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 I'm very involved in it. The scene where they're hiding in the cabin and, the, and they find out what is going on and the cannibals come back and they fall asleep and they're sneaking out. And it should be a very cliched scene, but it's so it's so held tight. You are holding your breath because you want these guys to get out of the cabin, and they, they do. And maybe it's very by the numbers things, but it's executed so well. It does. I, I, it's one that does definitely feel like a '70s horror film. Like that was what they wanted wanted to do when they were making it, and I think they very much exceeded getting the feel of '70s horror well, really well. They get that tension across excellently. Yeah, they really do. And there's a couple of other scenes where they where they were they're up in a watchtower and the cannibals are trying to burn them out and I also thought that was very interesting because one of the characters she just saw her fiance die and you think it's grief stricken and she's like I, and the cannibals are trying to burn him out of this watchtower and she's like I'd rather jump than burn to death and it's really cool because the doctor stops and he's kind of the logical one and he's like and like her friends kind of thinking oh this is the grief talking and then the doctor kind of thinks about it and she's like oh no she's right I would rather I'd mm -hmm. rather jump than burn to death too and you don't see that in, in any country this isn't something you see that isn't common in horror. Yeah, like, there's a lot of stuff, like, I, overall, like, this is a movie that, yeah, there's stuff I really can commend about the movie and see why a lot of people would really like it. I can see why this became a big franchise. Mm -hmm. But just, I don't know what it is about it, just something about the movie just never really fully it clicks, clicks with, with me. I don't know, I can't, I've never exactly been able to even pinpoint what it is about the movie that never pinpoints me. Is I, it I, too by the numbers? A little bit. It's a, That's something, maybe that's what it is a little bit. Because that's something, I, that's why I like part two better, because part two has a little bit more interesting stuff going on because that has the whole reality TV angle going on and all that and just more in, and a little bit more interesting performances all around. Uh, even even though probably these characters in this movie get a bit more characterization, the other the characters in part two get a little are a little bit more interesting and memorable with all of their character quirks. That one leans in a little bit more into like traditional slasher uh, slasher archetypes, I suppose, than this one does. But yeah, like. It's not a movie I, I, again, I don't hate this movie, just, I, I think it's, I think that's it. I think it's a little too by the numbers, like, okay, I'm sitting here watching this, like, okay, I could watch Wrong Turn, or I could just watch Hills Have Eyes from 70, uh, 79. I know? get that, but you gotta remember, at the time, this was something that was, it wasn't exactly fresh and new, but we had not seen it for a long time, so I think it was reveling at this movie, I think one of this. Oh, absolutely. I think one of this movie's strongest points is it's very self-aware. In fact, I love this, even though this is not a particularly jokey film, there are some funny lines, and they basically, and the audience is thinking it too, when these people come up to the cabin, they don't know what's going on, but, but, but bells are going off that something not right here and they see this fucked up cabin and probably uh jeremy soto character is probably my favorite character and uh he he goes you know and he goes have you ever seen a little film called deliverance because we're all thinking it the audience is thinking it. the cabin looks like something out of yeah. deliverance and i like that the fa that the movie is self-aware to go hey we're in on the joke too audience it's, it's, keeping, it's very cute it's keeping that little sense of the madness from the 90s a little bit this very exactly. much is a hybrid of like a little bit of all of the last three decades of horror is kind of fused into this one. Mainly 70s, but there's a little bit of 80s sensibilities and a little bit of 90s there uh, is. a little bit of 90s sarcasm in it too. I think that's one reason why it works so well for me. Yes, it's 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 kind of fresh and new at least for the time. This we're going back to a grimier, dirtier part, but it also is a holdover to 70s, 80s and 90s just like you said. It mar it works really well for somebody in my age bracket. That's something else too maybe cuz like uh, cuz like this movie was 2003. I was two years old when this movie <laughs> came out, so maybe that's another part of it too. Is I didn't grow up with it. I didn't, you know, I didn't get into horror to like the late two thousands, early twenty ten. So Fake like, horror I was, of course, because <laughs> uh, so I experienced this movie not in the context of its time. Ah! Fuck. Pumpkin. Um. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't, yeah, so maybe that's a part of it too, because I didn't experience this movie in the context of when it was released in the time uh, time frame it was. I experienced it after as just, oh, another horror film from this uh, time period. As, uh, you know, maybe that's another element too, is I didn't have the appreciation of how different it was from the stuff that was coming out contemporary, because I didn't, it, I never really noticed that until like uh, actually looking up this video, like, oh yeah, all three of these, like the Venn diagram of like, huh, Takes about a year and a half for a movie to get a, get into production. What happened a year and a half from, uh, from two after before two thousand three? 
Oh, right. that's, yeah, right, that's what happened. I was born, of course, and of course everyone wanted to make t make more fucked up movies because of that. Exactly, um, yeah. like you say, um, horror reflects what's going on during, the, you know, the time yeah, it's made. Yeah, you know, why, yeah, look at, look at the 50s, uh, 50s communism scare movies, look at, look at all the AIDS allegories in the 80s and the, even the early 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at how uh, we're sort of kind of cynical yet also optimistic the 90s horror fi uh, films were. 70s was very, was very nihilistic because we were still experiencing Vietnam. You know, that's horror always reflects that. And again, you see it with early 2000s stuff with how they reflected 9-11 uh, and the later invading of Afghanistan. Yeah, it really is. So so maybe, but you're, you're not alone because a lot of people, even people who are big of this franchise, I hear this is not, this is always, ah, this is one of the weakest one. Maybe not the weakest. There's, 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 yeah, there's, there's, there's still part six or the remake <laughs> for most people. For the remake for me, definitely. But I, I just, but this is one that's not as beloved and I don't know I've always had a really soft spot and I just wanted to show some love also another thing I really love about that is the design of the the cannibals themselves this is a fun movie it knows what it is and there are some really cool tropes I like how the fact that these big old hunking inbred cannibals are so light on their feet the one is fucking Robin Hood yeah. in the trees we, we, that with is the bow and arrow something I'll give it to uh, to I think it becomes a little bit more ridiculous and goofy as the series goes on with, with how they do it because like as fa as uh, Phelous joked when he did this the review series of these back ages ago, incest, they kind of become incest supervillains by a point of like, how do they do this? Because incest gives us superpowers, you know? Like, yeah, they kind of become unstoppable basically Jasons by like the third movie, pretty much. They're like slasher VC Andrew incest bibbits. Yeah, basically, like, yeah, like, you're not wrong there. But like, in this one, it does, like, uh, mainly because we don't get any explanation as to what the fuck their deal is. They're just random mutant people People that live out in the woods you don't even really get the incest thing although it's you know you would pretty much assume that but as far as you know they're just mutant people like in much like with hells have eyes uh, it's like it's more so like it's subtextual in that they're that they're like a product of incest you know or they're just weird mutant people uh, they do uh, although at the beginning of the text crawl you do see all the newspapers talking about inbreeding and yeah stuff. That's, that's true is cool. that's true but, but it mean, is very much subtext like you said yeah and again show a good example of show don't tell filmmaking exactly um, but Ex yeah exactly but I do but 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 again, it kind of takes it. But I also, but I love watching and how they're in the trees and how they can be so very light on their feet. It, but it's fun. It's fun to watch. It's interesting. It's 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 doing a very tried and true. But I would not say it's a complete. It's more of a loving homage than a blatant rip. Very off. much so. It, very, very much so. Much like how again, not to keep going back to them. Much like uh, Chainsaw Remake and House of a Thousand Corpses were also loving homages. This one falls into that category as well too. I very much just like people who grew up watching these movies. Movies and just now they can make their own movies and it's like with John Carpenter making all and all the other sci-fi 50s sci-fi remakes in the 80s it's the kids who grew up with those movies now being able to make their own movies and seeing how they influence them, uh, their uh, their work now it's it, 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 you know it's it's always cool to see that it is it's very cool to see that and the design the cat the, the actual inbred designs are very good and I didn't know this you knew this. yeah they were they were the last super hands-on work that Sam Winston did, ever did he did the he did the design for all of them and did some of the sculpting for some of the prosthetics too. He was fairly hands-on with this movie. He did a couple other projects after this, but this was one of the last major projects Winston ever did before he passed. So that that's very cool. And uh, not only the effects work with the with the cannibals, which they look solid. They they look for, uh, solid. The effects. As the movies go on, they look cheaper and cheaper, but you know, cheaper movies. Yeah, there are those. All the other movies are a lot cheaper than this film is. Um, but like the actual kills, all of them look really good, and that's all I think I do want to mention actually, because I always, I always, it's something you notice a lot with like horror from this time period is CG use. There's a lot, you know. In yes. This, whereas this movie is very much practical effects enhanced by CG or camera work enhanced by CG. Yes. Everything is done practically, but there's a little bit of like extra little. CG CG uh, tooling in order to enhance the effect, uh, the way the movie looks, as opposed to, the, again, not to harp on the sequels, but as opposed to the sequels, which kind of become CG fest by, like, the fourth or fifth movie. Yes, and if you're, this is the way to do CG. If you've got to yeah, use CG, absolutely. this is the better way And it way honestly, it. like, because it's so minimal, it doesn't look that bad. It's yes. Like, your eye will catch it, but it doesn't look that bad, honestly.
just like it's like makeup if you're doing it right no one even knows you're wearing exactly, it exactly yeah. that's kind of the way it is um but another thing i really like about what one thing that just tickles me to death is our actual cannibals because of uh, the cannibal playing three finger was actually an english uh, and i think he's classically trained actor um and i i and he gives he is out of all the cannibals he's the one who's like making the laughs and stuff he's yeah. very noticeable and i noticed his performance and i just i just love the you fact can, that this is an english guy playing an indian well you can tell you can tell why you can tell how he became like the iconic one of of the of the franchise and kind of like the jason of the fran uh, franchise and it's cool to see that actor again that actor has popped up in a lot of stuff out of makeup now he's the grandfather in anything for jackson and a couple other things so he, i just like that actor in general so yeah i really do but i just i just love this film i think it doesn't get enough love it's not a perfect film by any way but i have a soft spot and i always would be even people who love the franchise i feel like this one's always like oh yeah that that's there but these are way cooler than this and i'm like no guys this one's actually pretty solid too like i said i really like these characters i think the gores effect and like i said there is a couple of scenes it's not just in the cabin there are two or three scenes in this movie that the tension really works well and you get a little nervous for these characters and there's some there's some emotional development in these characters it's a little deeper than a fucking hill cannibal hillbilly film from the early 2000s yeah it definitely be. does like that's something i never noticed until this watching like i do have a newfound appreciation for this film i still don't necessarily say that it's a movie that i'm particularly fond of or have a big love for but i do really respect this film a lot and have a lot of appreciation and totally can say yeah it's a good movie it's totally a movie that if you have not seen it in a very long time or never seen it it's definitely worth a, a, a revisit in my opinion or you love your cannibal movies. yeah it's definitely a film i can totally say yeah check it out it's a solid flick it yeah it doesn't it doesn't reinvent the cannibal wheel but it's definitely a fun addition and it's definitely not the worst of either cannibal films or this series no that's the remake that fuck you to that remake fuck you to that remake i i know there's fans out there no like disrespect well no disrespect to you either but god i hated that goddamn remake and one of the reasons why this works so well because that remake did it you know kind of went as opposite from this film as you could and I, I, well intentionally because it's the same writer and director doing the remake i so. still say he just didn't think the movie was strong enough that's so he fair. slapped it on that, that, that's fair that's fair that's entirely possible but yeah but no, no hate because i know there's a lot of people who love the remake i'm not being an asshole it's just this is way more this is my this is the real wrong turn this movie. is more your jam this is definitely more my jam and 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 it's one i know this is kind of a random movie to do for halloween but i've always wanted to talk about it and i thought you know 30 we needed to fill 31 days and i thought we need a good cannibal movie mm -hmm. usually we save those for november and thanksgiving because mm -mm, good but you know you gotta switch it up a little yeah <laughs> and before you ask no we're not doing the other sequels in november we'll get around to them at some point but we're not doing them anytime soon although the youtube horrid me if you guys would like to if we got enough likes and comments you know, you never yes. know. We're, we're holding the remake of the sequels hostage. We won't review them until this video gets, I don't know, two likes. <laughs> well, that surpasses our usual no, number. No, yeah, yeah. You got to give this video two likes or else or else we're never going to do part of the, the rest of the franchise. You never hear our thoughts and you really like mm -hmm, it. Yeah, I have a lot of opinions about the rest of the franchise, but never get to hear them because this video won't get two likes, I bet. <laughs> You should have at least asked for 15 now. No, no, no. <laughs> Two's about right. Two's about right. Okay, so with all that, we hope you guys are, I don't know where this video is going to be in our lineup, but we hope wherever we are in October, we hope you guys are enjoying spooky season. Definitely make some time, spend it with those you love. Do, you know, instead of go some, carol, you know, carve some pumpkins, go on a hayride, visit a haunted house, watch a spooky movie, or just go outside and enjoy it not being a thousand degrees. Maybe hopefully. don't go out to the backwoods <laughs> of Appalachia though. That might not be a great idea. Yeah, but I hear it's beautiful there. Yeah, we'll pass. We'll <laughs> so pass. with all that out of the way, we will see you guys back here tomorrow for another as our 31 days of Halloween marches on. We hope you guys are enjoying this and as always, booze and ghouls, if you happen to be new around here and like the content, there's no better time than October to push that up the, the, the subscriber button because October push it! Push it! Push it real good. <laughs> My God, this got <laughs> sexual quickly. So with all that, please, children, please. <laughs> so 
And with all that out of the way, boos and ghouls, we hope you're having an incredible October. We hope you're enjoying it. Come back tomorrow to hear our thoughts on another horror movie or who knows what we're, what bag of tricks we're pulling out. Um, but come back tomorrow and see what we got cooking up for tomorrow. And with all that out of the way, we wish you a good day, a good evening, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Talk to you guys then. Bye, guys. Cheers.